Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar, Rover Product Enhancements V521, Borrow from House Expansions and More, pre presented by Stay in Touch Implementation Consultant, James Lee. I'm your host, Erin Fisher, the content writer here at Stay in Touch. Today's presentation will cover how you can get the most out of Rover V521 product release. In this webinar, we will explore changes to the Borrow from House functionality illustrate new additions to custom exports, and discover the addition of the credit check report to scheduled reports. We'll have a short Q&A at the end of the presentation. Feel free to, to submit questions throughout the presentation, and we will answer them in the order they are received at the end. And that's all I have right now. James, I'm gonna hand the presentation over to you. Thanks, Erin. Mm -hmm. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining the webinar for our 5.21 release today. Uh, my name is James Lee, and I'll be covering over some of the features that we have rolled out in this new version. The first thing that I'd like to cover is a new functionality that we've added in our group borrow function. As some of you are aware, uh, we did release about a month ago the ability to borrow from the house when making a reservation for a group that has no inventory uh, attached to it. Uh, part of the fun new functionality that we have is the ability now to take an existing reservation and attach it to a group that has no inventory applied to it. Uh, so if I take a look, for example, I have a reservation under my own name, which is James Lee. From here, if I go in to add a group, I can now click on the green tile over here on the right, and I can type the name of the group, and I have a group called the webinar uh, event. Webinar training. By adding this, I get the message here to link the group to the reservation. And I now receive this message. Uh, previously before, when you had an existing reservation, you were not able to use the group borrow functionality. You would have to go to the group to add the inventory. So with this new functionality, it now allows you to take an existing reservation add it to a group that no longer has any rooms available or for that particular room type, and it's gonna let you borrow uh, from the house. So I can click borrow. And now the reservation has been added to group. Now this functionality will only work if you have the permission to do the group room borrow. Uh, as long as you have that permission, then you should be able to add a reservation to a group that no longer has any rooms available. And just as a reminder, the dates of the reservation do have to be within the dates of the group itself. The next feature that we're gonna discuss is a uh, addition that we added to our custom exports. <clears throat> Uh, so if I click on the main menu here and go to reports and schedule a report export, uh, we have the option here to create a custom export. And I say new export over here on the right. And let's say I want to take a look at reservation data. Uh, and here I'm going to select the information that I would like to show on the export. So let's say I want to go ahead and do my room number, which is going to be... A little hard to find sometimes. Hotel code. Type room number here. So we have our arrival room number. We have our guest information down here at the bottom. So first name, last name, and then I could choose my arrival date and departure date as well. And the new field that we've added is going to be the vehicle registration field. And that's going to be located. right here. Uh, so a vehicle registration field, you can now uh, have that field activated on the guest card. You can add that information during the check-in process, and then you can create an export that will show all your guests that have the vehicle registration number. Now, once you have your column selected of the data that you would like to see, you have your filters over here. So I can click add filter. The first one I would probably want to do is my options. And for my options, I definitely want a reservation status because I really only want to look at guests that are currently checked in. So my options here, I can choose only checked in here. And then I could add a second option where it shows general here. Uh, there is an option here where you can say vehicle registration number has a value. That way on the or export itself, it's only going to include those reservations that have a value in that vehicle registration field. Uh, if they don't have it, it won't show on the export. And if you don't have this filter here, 
all reservations would show even if they don't have the vehicle registration uh, attached to it. And then over here on the right, we have our frequency. We can determine how often we want this report. Let's say I would like it daily. We're gonna do once a day. And maybe this is a night audit feature. So we want them to go ahead and get their reports because maybe they do an audit of your parking uh, that evening. So we can say they're gonna get that report at 11 p.m. And here we can choose how we want the report delivered. Uh, normally it's gonna be email. So you can put an email address in there. However, if you do have an FTP site configured, uh, we can get it set up there. And we can also configure it to drop into a Google Drive or Dropbox if you have one of those as well. But by doing email here, I can type in my email address. You do have to remember to give the report a name and that's actually down at the very bottom on the left side here, there's an export name. Uh, so I can call this my parking report and I select my value, which is going to be the CSV value and I can open that in Excel. Oh, I forgot to actually add the email address. There we go. There it is. Now I'm gonna save the export. And the next uh, topic that we're gonna discuss on this new version is also in our reports area. Um, under schedule reports up here at the top, a new report schedule. We have added a new report that you can set to be scheduled to email on a daily basis, which is the credit check report. Uh, with the credit check report, you can highlight it here, choose your parameters on the right. Uh, normally you probably just wanna look at exceeded only because those are gonna be the reservations that are gonna need some attention. Uh, they can either have a declined credit card or they don't have enough authorization to cover the remaining stay. Uh, so that's what that exceed only option does. Uh, choose how you would like the report sorted and your file format is going to be a CSV file. I can go into my scheduling details, how often I want this report. I can say once a day, maybe it's gonna be at 8 a.m and then move on to my distribution list where I can add my email address. Oh, it looks like I already have one that exists, uh, but that's how you would normally set it up. And with that, that's gonna conclude our new functions that we have on 5.21. I'm gonna turn the uh, back over to you, Aaron. All right, uh, thank you, James, for that insightful presentation. I'd now like to turn over the floor for questions. Remember, you can submit questions through the question box in the middle of the control panel. All right, so I'll give everyone a few seconds to enter those questions. And it looks like the first is, I'm looking for a get the guest card in my hotel. And I don't see the field for vehicle res registration. How do I get that? Okay, that's actually gonna be done in your configuration. So if you go into settings here, and then under cards, now there's an area here for guest card fields. This is where you can activate what fields you would like to display on the guest card. There is an option here for vehicle registration number, and then it turns on here. Uh, to see where that re registration shows up, if I go back to a reservation that is currently in-house, I take a look at a stay over here. Under the guest card now, there is a field here for vehicle registration number. All right. And that's where it shows. Thank you. Um, and will the borrow from house inventory function automatically revise the existing reservation rate to reflect the group rate? Or do you have to manually revise it? it? No, it will actually update the rate to be the rate of the group. Great. All right. And then. Um, the next is, can you show me the permission for room borrow? Absolutely. Uh, if I go into settings here, and I can go into hotel staff and look at my permissions. And I always look, when I'm looking at permissions, because there's so many and it kind of be tedious to kind of scroll through everything, I like to use the Chrome search feature. So I could just do control F, that gives me a search bar. And then I could type in for that keyword, which is going to be borrow and I have the group borrow option over here. If I wanted the front office staff to be able to do that, I would move it over to the assigned permissions and that will give them access to that. Great. Okay, um, and I'll give everyone a few more seconds to enter those questions. All right, uh, since there are no more questions, I would like to take to the floor to offer a few final thoughts. Uh, one second. All right, 
So in this webinar, we explored changes to the borrow from house functionality, illustrated new additions to custom exports, and discovered the addition of the credit check report to scheduled reports. With that, I'd like to conclude our presentation. Thank you all for coming, and if you have any additional questions, feel free to email me at erin.fisher at shigigroup.com. Thanks again.